Hey everyone, welcome back to another Circuit Basics video. Today, I'll be showing you how to set up the DS18 B20 temperature sensor on the Raspberry Pi. The DS18 B20 is a small little digital sensor that looks just like a transistor. The nice thing about this temperature sensor is that it only needs one wire to send data to the Pi. It uses what's called the one wire interface. Only three wires are needed in total, including the power and ground wires. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up the DS18B20 so that it outputs temperature data to an SSH terminal like PuTTY. Then I'll show you how to set it up so it outputs to an LCD display. I'll be using some sample code written in Python. I'm going to leave a link to the post where you can copy the code in the video description. All right, let's get started. Got my pie here and a couple breadboards. I'm going to put the DS18B20 in the breadboard with the flat side facing me. On the DS18B20, the pin on the right side is VCC, the center pin is the data pin, and the pin on the left side is ground. Then I'm going to insert a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor between the VCC and data pins. Next I'll connect a jumper wire from the data pin of the sensor over to pin 7 of the Raspberry Pi. All the Raspberry Pi pin numbers I'll be talking about here are the physical pin numbers on the board. Now I'll connect the VCC pin of the sensor over to the 3.3 volt pin of the Pi. You can also connect it to the 5 volt pin, but I'll be using the 5 volt pin for the LCD later on. Now I'll connect the ground pin of the DS18B20 to pin 6 of the Pi. Okay, I'm going to assume that you've already established an SSH connection or some other way to access the command prompt. I'm going to be using PuTTY. So let me just open up PuTTY and log into my Pi here. I have the full version of Raspbian Jesse installed right now. And the first thing we'll need to do is configure the one wire interface on the Pi. To do that, we need to edit the boot config file. So the one wire interface will open up the next time the Pi boots up. So enter sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash config dot txt. And scroll all the way down to the bottom. And enter dt overlay equals w1 dash gpio. Control X and Y to save and exit. Now I need to reboot to activate the boot config changes. So enter sudo reboot. Log back in. Now enter sudo modprobe w1 dash gpio. Then sudo modprobe w1 dash therm. Enter cd forward slash sys forward slash bus forward slash w1 forward slash devices. Now enter ls to show the unique address of your ds18b20. The one I have connected has the address 28-0000066376969. Now enter CD followed by the address shown in the previous step. In my case, I'm going to enter CD 28-0000000. The DS18B20 stores the temperature readings in a file called w1 underscore slave. Entering cat w1 underscore slave will show the contents of the file. Which are the raw temperature readings of the DS18B20? See this number here? 
T equals 26187. That's the temperature in degrees Celsius without the decimal point. So my sensor is currently reading 26.187 degrees Celsius. Now let's run a program that will take that raw temperature value and convert it to degrees Celsius and Fahrenheit. Here's the blog post where you can find more details about the DS18B20, technical specs, the data sheet, wiring diagrams, and the steps we just did to enable the one wire interface. So here's a Python program that will output temperature to the SSH terminal. I'm just going to copy all this. You can enter CD to get back to the root directory. I'm going to create a file called temp.py. Right click to paste the code in there. I'll enter sudo python temp that py to run it. Okay, so here are the temperature readings. I'll put with Celsius first and Fahrenheit second. All right, now let's set this up so we can get the temperature output to an LCD display. I'll insert my LCD into the breadboard. Now I'll connect a jumper wire from the VSS pin of the LCD to the negative rail of the breadboard. Then I'll connect the VDD pin of the LCD to the positive rail of the breadboard. I'll insert a 10K ohm potentiometer to adjust the contrast. Then another 10K ohm potentiometer for the backlight brightness. Now I'll connect a jumper wire from the VO pin of the LCD to the center pin of the contrast potentiometer. Then I'll connect the RS pin of the LCD over to pin 37 of the Pi. And all the pin numbers that I'll be talking about are referring to the location of the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi board. Next, I'll connect the RW pin of the LCD over to the negative rail of the breadboard, and the E pin of the LCD over to pin 35 of the Raspberry Pi. Now I'll connect the data pins in 4-bit mode, so we only need to use data pins D4 to D7. I'm going to use a ribbon cable, and it's kind of hard to see but I'm connecting data pin D4 of the LCD to pin 33 of the Pi, LCD pin D5 to pin 31 of the Pi, LCD pin D6 to pin 29 of the Pi, and LCD pin D7 to pin 23 of the Pi. Now I'm going to connect a jumper wire from the A pin, the second to last pin on the LCD, to the center pin of the backlight brightness potentiometer. Now I'll connect the last pin of the LCD, pin K, to the ground rail of the breadboard. Then I'll connect one of the outer pins of the backlight brightness potentiometer to the positive rail of the breadboard. It doesn't really matter which side you connect. It'll only affect which direction knob turns increase or decrease the backlight brightness. Next, I'll connect one side of the contrast potentiometer to the negative rail of the breadboard. Same here. The side you connect just determines whether clockwise or counterclockwise turns of the knob turn up or down the contrast. Now just move the ground wire from the Pi over to the negative rail of the breadboard.
Then I'll connect the negative pin of the DS18B20 to the negative rail of the breadboard. I'll connect the positive rail of the breadboard over to the 5 volt pin of the Pi, pin 2. And the LCD lights up right away. Let me just adjust the brightness and contrast potentiometers. Okay, now that we have the LCD connected, we'll need to install a Python library to drive the LCD. It's called the RP LCD library. This library has all the functions we need to print to the LCD and do other stuff like scrolling and positioning text. We'll need to download the library with the Python package index or pip. Pip might already be installed on your Pi, but if not, enter sudo apt get install python pip at the command prompt. Okay, now we can install the RPLCD library by entering sudo pip install RPLCD. Now let's open up our example program. Control K to cut all this out. Now I'll copy this example program, which will output the temperature readings to the LCD. So now you can see the temperature is displayed on the LCD. The top line shows the temperature in Celsius, and the bottom line shows Fahrenheit. And when I grab the sensor, the temperature increases. In this program, we've rounded the temperature value to one digit after the decimal. To change the number of significant figures, Edit line 31 in the code for Celsius and line 44 in the code for Fahrenheit. Where it says round temp C, comma 1, the 1 tells the program to round to one place after the decimal. If we change the 1 to a 3, we'll get three significant figures after the decimal. Do the same for Fahrenheit. So now the temperature readings are displayed with three digits after the decimal. All right, well, that's about it. Hope this video has helped you get this little temperature sensor up and running on your Pi. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment. And if you like the video, be sure to subscribe. All right, talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.